alerted any forecast of a major collapse in property prices and generally ignored the more mainstream commentators who have suggested only moderate impact on house prices as a result of the pandemic. And now we're gradually seeing media acknowledging that the most dire predictions about prices just haven't happened. Anthony Keane, a personal finance writer for the News Corps Australia Network, writes this week, fears of a huge house price fall just haven't eventuated in Australia. He says the recent second wave of coronavirus that's crashed mainly on Victoria has given more ammunition to those with a negative view, but it's pointless to panic too much about property prices right now. He says the latest core logic data shows four capital cities home values were higher or steady between late March and late July. Canberra up 1.3%, Hobart up 0.8%, Adelaide up a similar amount and Darwin basically flat. In the same period, Brisbane values dropped just 0.6%, Sydney fell just 1.7% and Perth 2%. And he points out that, not surprisingly, the worst city result is the virus-plagued Melbourne, Melbourne, where the median price has dropped 3.5% in the past month, past five months. And he says the scary 30% dives forecast by some appear far-fetched. Yes, indeed, that was never going to happen. The latest figures on prices are out today from SQM Research, and they show that median prices remain higher than they were a year ago in seven of the eight capital cities. The only exception to that where prices are lower than a year ago is Darwin. And in the past month, uh, they're largely unchanged in terms of uh, median house prices in Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, Darwin and Hobart. They actually rose in Melbourne in the past month, but the rise was only 0.1%, which I regard as effectively no change. According to the SQM figures, Sydney is the only capital city to record a substantial decline in its house prices in the past month, but they nevertheless remain 6.5% higher than they were a year ago. Now, the Reserve Bank of Australia has indicated that it's probably going to keep the official interest rate at its historical low, for the next three years, the central bank reduced the official cash rate at its meeting in March, on March 3rd, as the pandemic started to grip the nation and then held an extraordinary meeting two weeks later. And the board decided on a package that included a further reduction to the current position of 0.25% for the official interest rate. Governor Philip Lowe has told the House of Representatives Standing Committee on Economics that the cash rate looks set to remain at that level for some time. And he says the board has clearly indicated that it will not increase the cash rate until progress has been made towards full employment and it's confident that the inflation will be sustainably between the 2% to 3% target range. These conditions are not likely to be met for at least three years. And against that background, Lenders are competing strongly for the business of borrowers and offering interest rates that start with a two. And in one or two cases, interest rates below 2% for owner-occupier borrowers. Although it's important to note, as mortgage broker Louise Lucas noted during the webinar I hosted last week, that lenders have further tightened their criteria and are making it more difficult for property buyers to get the approvals for the loans that they need. Now, rate my agent's half yearly price expectation report. Now, this is covering the first six months of the year. Asked 33,000 successful vendors of properties if the sale price they achieved was above, below, or in line with their expectations. And the results show an increase in satisfaction year on year, with overall net ha happiness up 12 percentage points from June last year, 27%, to June this year, 39%. During the first half of the year, vendor price satisfaction firstly slumped during March, followed by a further slump in April, with only 35% of Australian sellers reporting an above expectation sale price during that month. However, when compared with the same period year on year, last year, April 2020 still reported an 8% increase in satisfaction. And according to Rate My Asian uh, CEO, Mark Armstrong, April was a particularly tough month for vendors. There wasn't a single state in Australia that didn't experience a decline in sale price happiness. This is reflective of the high levels of economic and consumer uncertainty around the business impact of government restrictions associated with managing the pandemic. But from late April, the market began to find its feet, with vendor happiness seeing a stabilisation throughout May and into June, where 36% were satisfied. The stabilisation can be a 
attributed to an unprecedented drop in property supply. Suddenly buyers were having to compete for a reduced number of properties on the market, which kept prices stable and naturally vendor sale price satisfaction improved a little. And he says, as expected, what we've seen since May is the stabilisation of market confidence. After the initial shock in March and April wore off, consumer optimism is on the way back, as seen in our recent price expectation report, Armstrong says. The return of consumer confidence is largely attributed to the Australian government's stimulus measures. Improvements were led by strong satisfaction levels in Canberra, where net vendor happiness jumped from 44% in April to 57% in June. Now we're seeing increasing acknowledgement of the strength of markets in regional Australia, which generally don't get much attention in mainstream media. According to the latest report from Heron Todd Weiss, that's the national firm of valuers, many regional property markets remain resilient due to low or nil infection numbers. And I would add that there are economies which are well set up to prosper in the pandemic period. This month's HTW's residential teams around Australia have revealed the state of affairs for investor purchases in their specialty locations. For example, they say that Byron Bay property sales have kicked upward over the past month as intrastate and interstate travel brought non-local buyers back into play. It also says investors in the New England Northwest of New South Wales are active in the major centres of Tamworth and Gunnedah with properties between 200 and 400,000 selling at or near their listing price. In the north of the Gold Coast, it says the market is currently strong and properties marketed with sensible expectations are selling very quickly. In Rockhampton and central Queensland, they continue to see residential properties selling well. Well presented properties continue to be snapped up by purchases in both Rockhampton and the Capricorn Coast. And of Townsville, it says the resilience of the Townsville residential market post COVID-19 continues to astound us with increasing sentiment and a noticeable increase in the vacant land sales and new home construction thanks to the $25,000 home builder grant. It also expresses positive sentiment for various other markets around the country including Warrnambool in Victoria, Alice Springs in the Northern Territory and Hobart in Tasmania. Now this general theme of solid to strong markets in regional areas is also reflected in the recent report on vacancies from SQM research. It says that residential vacancies in outer suburbs of the major cities and in regional areas fell sharply in July. One example was the sharp reduction in rental vacancies on the Mornington Peninsula on the edge of Melbourne in contrast to the trend in the inner city of Melbourne. Now, the latest vacancy report from the REIQ also shows that North Queensland vacancy rates have continued to fall, with some towns experiencing their tightest rental markets on record. Townsville recorded its lowest ever vacancy rate during the June quarter, falling to just 1.7%. The Burdekin region, which had an unenviable vacancy rate of above 10% at the end of 2015 and also 2016, has seen its stock of available rental property shrink to just 1.1% in the June quarter. Chartist Towers had one of the biggest drops in vacancy rates, falling from 5% in March to just 1.5% in the June quarter. The Mount Isa market has also tightened, dropping from 2.5% to just 0.5%. It's also very tight in the rental market in Mackay, with a 1.3% vacancy rate in the June quarter. And the Isaac region, not far away, which includes a number of mining towns, also has a 1.2% vacancy rate. REIQ CEO Antonia Mercarella says the latest figures show the state is facing the tightest rental market conditions since the global financial crisis. And a separate report on the Sunshine Coast says would-be tenants are being turned away across the Sunshine Coast as agents struggle with the lowest rental property vacancy rates the region has seen in years. LJ Hooker Twin Waters property manager Nicole Wilson said for the first time in years the area had a 0% rental property vacancy rate. She says we've got loads of people, qualified tenants looking to move to the area, but we've just got nothing to offer them. Now, new home sales, they've risen by almost two thirds on the back of the federal government's home builder stimulus package, according to analysis by the Housing Industry Association. It says the onset of the pandemic in March saw uh, new home sales fall. But in the two months following the June announcement of the $670 million grants package, sales numbers have bounced 64% compared to two months prior. 
Chief Economist at the HIA, Tim Reardon, says the grant for eligible new residential homes, together with the improving health conditions and easing of restrictions across most jurisdictions, caused confidence in the property market to improve. And he says housing data has been ricocheting through the COVID-19 period. Another report from Oliver Hume says that land sales in Southeast Queensland have increased 400% in June, the strongest monthly result in five years as home buyers rush to take advantage of the Home Builder Grant scheme. A total of 1,110 lots were sold during the month, which was up from just 273 sales in April. Oliver Hume National Head of Research, George Bougius, says the Home Builder Grant and record low interest rates are driving demand. He says, despite the shutdowns and their economic impact, there are still plenty of buyers with stable incomes who are more than happy to take advantage of the numerous grants and incentives that are available. With restrictions lifted and the great incentives in place, the pent-up demand is returning, he says. Now, here's another emerging trend in real estate. The number of home buyers, um, which is shown up in research for Victoria and New South Wales, searching for a home office as part of their property purchase. This has risen for the second time since the pandemic began. Prospective buyers are also looking, uh, continuing to look for extras like a home studio, a retreat or a garden or courtyard for extra space. According to the uh, data on keyword searches, domain senior research analyst Nicola Powell says the surge in searches in Victoria is much more pronounced than those in New South Wales as Victoria and Melbourne has faced multiple lockdowns over the year. Victoria's surge in searches for home office, which are up more than 1,000% between June and July, coincided with its stage three and four lockdowns as people were forced to work from home. By comparison, New South Wales home office searches rose 17%. The largest increase between in searches between June and July was for retreat, up 78%. Powell says the coronavirus crisis was changing the language that searchers were using to search for properties with a bigger surge in home office than searches for study. And for me, this is a symptom of one of the major trends in real estate at the moment, which I call the exodus to affordable lifestyle. More people can work remotely and no longer need to be in the big congested expense of capital city, and they're moving to the fringes or to regional areas. And this has been enhanced by the lockdown periods, which have forced more people to work from home. And hence, more people prioritising home office when looking for homes with the key qualities that they want. That's it for now. Let's do it again soon. Bye for now.